Remember that time in college when we played pranks on our classmates? Oh, you mean Operation Classroom Chaos? The one where we replaced all the pens with disappearing ink? Yeah, watching everyone frantically try to take notes, only to see them vanish. Pure mischief. And the professor's face when they realized their board markers were also part of the disappearing act. Classic. But let's not forget the legendary toilet paper caper that all unraveled across the entire campus. It was like a never-ending streamer at a wild party. The janitors probably hated us. And speaking of parties, remember that time we borrowed the mascot costume for a night out? Ah, the night of the party crashing dancing bear. People were so confused, but we were the life of the party. Until campus security chased us away, thinking we stole the mascot. Good times, but do you recall the infamous invisible door prank? Oh, with the invisible plastic wrap across doorways, people walked into it like it was an invisible force field. We may have caused a few collisions, but it was worth the laughs. And who could forget the fake spider invasion? Right, placing those realistic looking spiders in unexpected places, we scared the living daylights out of everyone. Especially that one time when the professor found a spider crawling on their desk during a lecture. Classic panic ensued. We were masterminds of harmless chaos, my friend. College wouldn't have been the same without our mischievous adventures. True that. Let's raise a toast to the naughtiness that added spice to our college days. Ah, homework is the worst invention ever. Can we petition to ban it? If only it were that easy. So, what subject are you struggling with this time? Math, I swear, solving those equation feels like deciphering an ancient language. Ancient math mysteries, huh? Maybe we need a mathematician archaeologist to decode them. Oh, definitely. They could call it number raiders. The quest for the lost homework answers. I'd play that game, but seriously, let's tackle these problems together. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Teamwork? More like shared suffering. But fine, let's do this. Where do we even start? Well, problem number one looks innocent enough. If a train leaves the station at 3 p.m. Trains and stations. Matt's way of making everything more complicated than it needs to be. And they always involve hypothetical scenarios. Like, when will these trains ever leave on time? Good point. Maybe it's a fantasy land where trains are punctual and math problems solve themselves. Wishful thinking. Now, let's tackle the second problem. John has 30 apples. Apples? Is this math or a grocery list? Apparently, it's both. Maybe John's starting a fruit stand to escape the world of math problems. Smart move, friend. I might join him. Okay, what's next? Ah, the classic word problem Samantha has a garden in the shape of a parallelogram. Parallelogram gardens? Now we're landscaping in math class. What's next, quadratic topiaries? Brilliant idea. We'll revolutionize the gardening world with mathematical shrubbery. And instead of weeding, we'll be solving differential equations to keep the garden tidy. Our backyard will be the talk of the neighborhood, the Enigma Garden. I can already see the headline. Local friends turn garden into mathematical wonderland. But first, let's conquer these homework problems so we can enjoy our future as mathematical landscapers. Agreed, let's finish this. And who knows, 
Maybe our math skills will bloom like a well-maintained garden. And if not, at least we'll have a good laugh along the way. Ready for the next problem? As ready as I'll ever be, let the mathematical gardening adventure continue. Alright, problem number 4 Bob has 12 watermelons, and he wants to distribute them equally among his friends. Does Bob even have that many friends? I mean, who needs 12 watermelons? Maybe Bob is trying to start a watermelon-themed carnival, games, rides, and, of course, a watermelon toss. I can see it now. The Bob's Melon Extravaganza. Admission fee, one watermelon. Brilliant marketing strategy, but we're getting off track. Let's just solve the problem before Bob's watermelons take over. Fine, but I'm keeping an eye on Bob. Now, what's next? Ah, the piss de resistance if Johnny has eight chocolate bars and eats three. What does he have now? Diabetes. Johnny has diabetes. That's one way to interpret the question. But seriously, let's focus on the math, not Johnny's sugar intake. Alright, but I'm filing a complaint with the math authorities for promoting unhealthy habits. You do that while I attempt to decipher the mysteries of Johnny's chocolate-induced arithmetic. We're practically math detectives solving crimes against common sense. Maybe we should get badges. Detective badges for mathematical nonsense intervention DBMNI. We'll be the hero's math class never knew it needed. Our first mission. Save Johnny from a sugary demise. Agent 1. Ready for action. Agent 2. Let's rescue Johnny's pancreas. That might be the most ridiculous math homework session ever. But at least, we're having fun with it. Absolutely. Who knew solving equations could be so entertaining? Now, let's wrap up this mission and bid farewell to Johnny's Chocolate Saga. Mission accomplished, Agent 2. Until the next math emergency. Let's grab some snacks, but not too many chocolate bars. Agreed. Agent 1, let's celebrate our victory over absurd word problems with snacks that won't require a medical disclaimer. Onward to the snack aisle. Snacks, the unsung heroes of every homework battle. What's your snack strategy, Agent 2? I'm thinking a balanced mix of salty and sweet, a mathematical harmony of flavors, if you will. Mathematical harmony, I like that. But we should avoid anything that involves counting. We've had enough of that for one day. Good call. No counting calories or chips. Let's just grab a bag of something and retreat to the math-free zone. The math-free zone, where numbers fear to tread. I hear they've set up a perimeter of nacho cheese. Nacho cheese defenses, the ultimate deterrent against numerical invasion. And if any rough numbers try to sneak in, we'll hit them with a brush of cheesy jokes. They won't stand a chance. Cheesy jokes, our secret weapon, the ultimate force multiplier against the tyranny of numbers. Speaking of force multipliers, did you hear about the mathematician who's afraid of negative numbers? No, what's their deal? They'll stop at nothing to avoid them. That was bad, but, hey, at least it wasn't as bad as Johnny's chocolate problem. True, our jokes might be cheesy, but they won't give anyone diabetes. Cheesy jokes, the safer alternative to sugary word problems. We should market this. Absolutely cheesy joke emporium, where laughter is the best medicine and there's no math allowed. Snacks and jokes, the perfect antidote to a math overdose. Shall we proceed to the checkout, Agent 1? A 
affirmative agent to operation snack and joke success. Let's make our exit mission accomplished. And so, with snacks in hand and laughter in our hearts, we venture forth into the math-free wilderness. Until the next homework mission, my cheesy companion. Until then, my joke-tastic amigo, let's snack, be plenty, and the math be scarce. Onward!